All right, happy Friday, everybody. Happy UFC Vegas 23 Eve. Tomorrow, it all goes down at the UFC Apex in Las Vegas, the second UFC main card to air on ABC, and it all gets capped off in the middleweight division with Marvin Vittori taking on Kevin Holland in the main event. The main card, really solid. Some interesting fights in the prelims as well. And we're here to talk about it with all of you as we welcome you to the UFC Vegas 23 live preview show here on MMAfighting.com. I am Mike Hack being joined by the now former Between the Links champion after a hard-fought battle yesterday, Jose Youngs. There he is. We got the Prince of Positivity, Alex K. Lee, in the building. There he is. Whoa, 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 whoa. And on the one... Wow. Hey, look at that. Hey, we got to monetize this. We got to monetize Hold this. Hold on. We yep. can't, we... this... <laughs> yes. It's too, too, too hot for TV. Too hot. And we got it. On the ones and twos, baddest mustache in MMA media, E. Casey Lydon as well. There he is. Just blown away by the rugged, ruggedly handsome good looks of Alex K. Lee up in Canada. But listen, we're here to talk about this event with all of you guys. So if you got questions, you got thoughts, there's a fight that sticks out to you that's not getting enough love, we'll give it some love right here on the program. But here we go. AK, <laughs> middleweight division, once again at the uh, top of the marquee. It will be again next Saturday as well. But we were supposed to see Marvin Vittori versus Darren Till. Darren Till breaks his collarbone. Marvin Vittori smells some tomfoolery there. It's kind of silly, but... Here we are. Kevin Holland does what Kevin Holland does. This is why he's banned from on to the next one because he steps in on short notice at every opportunity. Gets a second main event spot in, what, three weeks now? This is crazy. Back-to-back -back fight night main events for Kevin Holland. Your thoughts on this middleweight matchup on ABC tomorrow afternoon? Yeah, Holland tying the, uh, tying the record for uh, quickest turnaround in a UFC main event. Of course, Davison Figueredo just did it. Uh, so he has the record for the pay-per-view main event. He just did it with the, the, the Alex Perez fight and the Brandon Moreno fight, UFC 255, UFC 256. So pretty impressive, pretty crazy thing to do. And I'm just imagining people who uh, turned into that first ABC event uh, who maybe were like not that familiar with the UFC and saw Kevin Holland fight in the main event, like, oh, cool. And then like they kind of got into it, like, when's the next event? And then now they're tuning into this. Uh, oh, sorry, I saw him on ESPN, excuse me. Now seeing him on ABC and it's like, didn't I just see this guy in the main event? And it's, I I hope they're not like us and they get uh, they get hooked on uh, get used to Holland fighting like every week or every month, excuse me, like we did like we did uh, at the end of at the end of 2020, which was which was fun. But you know, again, I know people love Kevin Holland, but it's like he, he can't fight all the time. He can't fight all the time. So I, I mean, he probably wants to, but uh, yeah, I don't know. He's he's creating a tough tough precedent for himself. But yeah, it's a cool main event. Uh, it's a cool replacement main event for uh, you know. I think we all would have liked to see Darren Till and Marvin Vittori, but. A Holland already looking to surpass his five appearances from last year, which is which is fun to watch. Jose, we saw we, we've seen more of a subdue, subdued Kevin Holland heading into this fight. You know, she, he's done some media, hasn't really talked a ton of trash, even though he's been talking trash about Marvin Vittori for months and months and months. Pretty much every single interview I've done with him over the last year and a half, he's mentioned Marvin Vittori and how much he's wanted to fight him. But even in the faceoff, Vittori was. Very animated, saying some stuff. Kevin Holland just rubbing his hands together. Not a word to be said. What are your thoughts on the approaches of these two gentlemen on the short notice fight, especially Kevin Holland, who normally <laughs> likes to talk and hasn't really done a whole lot of talking this week? Um, the Marvin Vittori being all animated and kind of hyped up and hyper and his emotions just boiling over doesn't surprise me. I've said it. I've been saying this on pretty much every show we we do on this site that Marvin Toy is probably the most emotional middleweight out there in terms of <clears throat> hiding his emotions and stuff. Like I like I've said a million times, he was like screaming at the top of his lungs when his Carl Roberson fight fell out uh, in Jacksonville, and then uh, Sean Shelby had to like approach him cautiously when Carl Roberson struggled with his weight cut when they booked the rematch because he didn't know what Marvin Toy was going to do. The Kevin Holland thing. It should. It surprised me at first, but the more I thought about it, I'm like, it just probably makes, it makes sense in my mind because he's been talking and trying to pick a fight with Marvin Torrey for a long time. Now that he has the fight, what else is there to say? He got the fight. He got what he wanted. The Derek Brunson one. He talked a lot about Derek Brunson, and he was 
talking all that greasiness and he was acting kind of funny at the weigh-ins. But that's because that's the longest we've seen Kevin Holland on the shelf between fights in months. So he probably had so much time to think about Derek Brunson. He got real bored. He finally got in front of him. He was like, you know, he just wanted to get it all out there. Didn't really have time between his last few fights, as AK said, uh, like the shortest time between main events for non-pay-per-view. So he's just in there to fight. He got the fight he wanted. What else is there to say? He's going to do a lot of talking on the fight, uh, but maybe Dana White's words still ring in his mind about the whole mental breakdown and this and that. I know he did an interview with our own David Martin uh, that he you know, he gave props, props to Derek Brunson and he talked a little bit of greasiness about Vittori, but not as much as uh, he has with you. So... It surprised me at first, but the more I thought about it, the more I dwelled on it. It doesn't really surprise me whatsoever. Casey, Jose brought up an interesting point because even when I talked to Kevin before the Derek Brunson fight, it been the longest layoff he'd had in a long time. A lot of time to stew after fighting five times last year. He was fighting almost monthly after the May fight. What do you think about this? Like, do you, do you think this makes Kevin Holland a little more dangerous now that he's kind of back to what we saw in 2020 with him fighting, you know, every few weeks, a month? You know, this isn't like a long training camp. He just kind of gets up, does what he does, gets in the cage and fights, doing the, the UFC a favor, filling this main event gap spot. What are your thoughts? Does this make Kevin Holland a little more dangerous now that he's kind of back to his old self from last year as opposed to having a full training camp for this fight? Is this his, um, is this his quickest turnaround coming off a loss? It could be. Do we know that? Okay, because most of all those quick turnarounds are coming off wins. Um, is this is he more dangerous? Um, ah, not really. I mean, I'm kind I'm kind of bummed he was less talkative. You know, it's like I don't know. It's like that's what that's what we like Kevin Holland for. You know, that's why he didn't get in the UFC, and that, that's why he's a star because you know he has that big mouth. Um, I, I I really think it doesn't play. It won't play. Diff, won't it won't mean anything. Um, I think as long as he has no um, injuries or maybe or even like over 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 maybe his body is overtrained from the back to back fight camps, that could be a bad thing or it could be a good thing for him. Uh, I'm not really sure. Um, only he knows to be honest. And um, it's just it's really just pure speculation. Casey, Jose, I'm, I'm just glad. Ahead. So I just want to say I'm, I'm glad he's finally taking his career seriously, Casey. Yeah, that's what I that's, that's what I saw today at the weigh-ins with him not talking. Twenty-seven fights into his pro career, eleven fights into his UC career. Now, now, we will finally see the serious Kevin Holland. So, thank goodness. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm tired tired of all the talking, Casey. I'm tired of all the chatter. Yeah. That's what we that's we we don't we don't need that. Yeah. No, no, none of the biggest, none of the biggest stars in the sport talk is just you know we no. just get in there and punch. No, I prefer s- silence. Yeah, from my fighters. Complete Jose, silence. Jose, with Marvin Vittori, you know, with with the Holland factor, especially with what he's done in the last year, he's. I don't know if we're calling him the A side here, but most people, since this fight was booked, everyone's kind of talking about Kevin Holland right now. But Marvin Vittori has won four in a row. He's coming off that big win against Jack Hermanson. Obviously, a, a fight with Darren Till would have done would have been huge for him. You get a guy like Darren Till in your resume, despite what his record has been in the UFC, kind of like Jed talked about him between the links yesterday. Till's a big name, got a big following, brings eyeballs, no doubt about that. A win over Till would have been huge for Vittori, puts him in a good position. What does a win over Kevin Holland do for Marvin Vittori right now? Just, just kind of keep him where he's at right now? Does it maybe set him up for a potential fight with Darren Till once he recovers from the collarbone injury? Like, What does a win over Kevin Holland do for Marvin Vittori right now? Didn't you see Marvin Vittori's media day scrum? He's the number one contender by default, according to him. So apparently a win over Kevin Holland gets him a title shot and a rematch against Suzer outside. No, but in all seriousness, <laughs> uh, wouldn't hate it because, what, that's five in a row. If Till's hurt, because obviously Israel outside his camp was saying, if Darren Till wins, next title shot, no question. So now that Till is hurting on the sideline for a bit, Paulo Costa's on the sideline for a bit, Derek Brunson got the big win. A lot, all of a sudden, a lot of these top middleweights are hurt or booked and moving forward. So the most important thing, as I say every week in all of these weight classes, is activity, especially uh, in this time where, you know, you could like Kevin Holland made the most of it. Like he was active a lot, and now he's getting these main events. Marvin Vittori, a win over Kevin Holland, he's active. I can't say that with everyone else in the middleweight division. And a win is a win. Kevin Holland, would be, yes, it would be two in a row and be two loss in a row. But what does that set up? Like, it depends, obviously, if Darren Till can come back by the end of the year. I would absolutely love 
the Darren Till Marvin Vittori fight because if Marvin Vittori beats Darren Till after beating Kevin Holland, I think there's a good argument that he gets a title shot. But of course, Robert Whitaker has to fight Kelvin Gastelum. If Robert Whitaker beats Kelvin Gastelum, he's already deserved a title shot with a win over Jared Cannonier. So maybe that sets up a Vittori Whitaker fight or a Whitaker Adesanya fight, and Vittori fights Darren Till on the undercard for the number one contender. Activity and moving forward in this weight class is the most important thing, uh, regardless of like obviously years ago name value means a lot but now in this pandemic era activity is king and moving forward that is the most important thing would agree with you 100 percent. now we get down to the to the brass tacks as the kids say ak your thoughts your pick main event how does this night end does it end with kevin holland getting his hand raised or does it end with the surging marvin vittori getting his hand raised oh no uh Oh gosh, I haven't done my thorough in-depth predictions yet. I I, I can't. I, I haven't stopped believing Kevin Holland. Look, I was one of the most critical people of all the the, the chitter chatter, all the, the 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 you know the gavity going on in the last fight. I I I, I was uh, bothered by. It. I'm not saying it affected his performance. I'm just saying I I, remember I I did not enjoy it, and I was and for the record consistent with my my view of Kevin Holland. I didn't I didn't love it when I liked all of his in cage talking kind of when I first saw him. Uh, I liked him more when he started winning fights and I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm just not, I don't, I don't love it. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I'm just not the biggest fan. Uh, so, but I still believe in his talents. I still think he's such a wild card and like I, I've picked against him before. I, I don't think I picked him to beat Jacare. So, uh, and I did pick him to beat Brunson. So I'm not, I'm not turning on that just because of what I saw in the Brunson fight. Obviously he was beaten by a more experienced, better fighter that day. Uh, so I, I still like his chances and I like Vittoria a lot too, but I just, I think Holland's going to surprise people. I just think there's 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 something to him. There's so much talent uh, on any given day. I do think he's like a, he really is a guy who could give, is a threat to like anyone in the top ten in middleweight. Uh, and in this case, it's, it's Vitor who's in his sights. So I think Holland's going to knock him out. I I'm, I'm just this isn't again not an in depth analysis. I'm just feeling this one. I'm going on a limb. Holland by KO. Casey. You know, I'm going. I'm going. I, I, I feel in what AK. <clears throat> I'm feeling what AK feels. Um, actually, I think um, Holland will bring out that big mouth on fight night, and it will make angry Marvin Vittori even angrier. And he will use that. To, and <laughs> Kevin will use that to his advantage, and he will counter him, and he will knock him out. And Kevin Holland somehow will be ranked above Derek Brunson come Sunday. Yeah, it's very possible, Jose. You got you uh you rolling with Kevin Holland or does Marvin Vittori make it five straight? Marvin Vittori makes it five straight. I like Kevin Holland as a fighter. I think he's a high action fighter. I don't have any problems with his talking, win or loss. I like do you man as long as you're having fun in there. I just think Marvin Vittori is a better fighter, and I think think he's one of the more underrated middleweights in the world. And this sounds like exactly what I said in the Derek Brunson fight. I just thought Derek Brunson was an overall better fighter than Kevin Holland. He won. I just think Marvin Torrey is a better fighter than Kevin Holland. Marvin Torrey is also a massive middleweight. He is a big, thick guy. He's not making weight on short notice anytime soon. Kevin Holland's not even remotely a big middleweight. He's a welterweight. As Casey has said, he's called for him to drop to welterweight since his first win in 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think Marvin Torrey is better. I think he's bigger. I think he's has all the momentum right now, and he has a lot to prove. He's incredibly furious and a furious <laughs> Italian as someone who dates an Italian, is a terrifying person. So I'm going with the angry Italian is going to be Kevin Holland and move forward in the middleweight division. See, see he, thinks, he thinks angry Italian will be good. I think the angrier Italian will be turned into a negative. So, you know, we'll have to see on Saturday. I, and also, Chelsea, how would you? I'm sure you never make her mad. Oh, so. that's You funny. would never make her mad. How would you know? How would you know? You never make her upset. Do you, Jose, yes, do you, we're going to go with that narrative. Jose, do you, do you think uh, would it be the striking or the the wrestling of Vittori that will be the difference? I just think he's just better curious. all around. Is all Kevin Holland more accurate striker than Marvin Vittori? 100%. I think Marvin Vittori is a harder hitter. I think he's a better grappler. I think he – like training – also, let's not forget, Kings MMA is a phenomenal gym. So he's going to have like, – he's like main training partner is Kelvin Gastelum. So that high-pressure moving forward action fighter – that's Mar Marvin Torrey does that like 10 rounds a day in the gym. So I just think Marvin is was in a camp preparing for Darren Till. Yes, it's a different style of fighter completely because Darren Till is obviously a counter striker. Kevin Holland's going to walk and like slap you in the face and talk all this trash. I just think Marvin is better 
all around outside of accuracy. I just don't think like they're obvious fighters when Kevin Holland fights, he can hit you real hard and put you down. Like lot we saw that with Derek Brunson. I can't remember a time when Marvin Torrey was like really, really just crippled inside the octagon where he's like, Oh crap, I do. Mar- Marvin Torrey is as Darren Till said, did you see that real long Instagram post he said where he was like making fun of how he looked and everything? He <laughs> said, you're a slow middleweight who's incredibly tough. So Darren Till is even aware of that. I just think all the apples are in Marvin Torrey's camp right now. And I just I just think he's going to win. I just think he's better all around outside of accurate striking. But I think accuracy is not going to be enough for Kevin Holland on Saturday. One, one, thing, yeah, I, I forgot I mean, to, one thing I forgot to note, I, I am curious if Holland will – learn from his five round experience with Brunson just like two weeks ago and and and, and how he's gonna um how he's gonna pace himself because uh I wonder if he uh I don't know if he I, I didn't see his I didn't see any of his pre-fight interviews but did he talk about the uh like maybe did he like, not pace himself right in the Brunson fight like maybe he thought that he was gonna get tired too soon so he, he he started off slower did he say anything about that I'm just curious I yeah. don't believe it was a pacing thing. I just yeah. think he was like Derek Brunson won fair and square. Fair and square. Yeah, but I just, I'm just, I wonder. I just, these are things we don't know. I'm very curious to find out on Saturday. That's why. I mean, I, I do like this fight. I think it's a fun fight. I just, um, it's just not the fight that you know we were expecting. I think. Yeah, I also but. am curious to see if Kevin Holland, like I said after his Brunson fight, I feel like he got a lot of oppor- openings to take advantage of. They just didn't. Like when he would get Kevin, mm-hmm. when he would like uh, clinch up with Brunson or get get like, he had opportunities for submission attempts or knees or strikes, and he would like stop at step two, and he wouldn't move forward. Maybe that's into what Casey was saying. Like he didn't want to just blow his gas like right away with like a bunch of knees. But I felt like I'm watching the fight, and I'm not his coach. I'm like, I see 500 things you could have done, you just stopped. So maybe maybe he. Maybe he doesn't do that. I don't know. I'm not a Kevin Hollins kid. Right now, uh, Marvin Vittoria, minus 350 favorite, the comeback on Kevin Holland, plus 290. So not a lot oh, of faith at the, uh, that is wild. the betting window as we speak. But uh, I'm kind of – What is the fan I'm vote? I'm kind of – Let me look. If you guys look at that. I'm, 81% I'm rolling, Vittoria. Yeah, we'll make it 81.1% Vittori because mm-hmm. I'm going with Marvin as well. I just – Listen, th- th- there's if this thing plays out in space for a while, Kevin Holland, this is the best chance Kevin Holland has to win. But I just don't know. Like, I don't see a world where Marvin Vittori doesn't do pretty much exactly what Derek Brunson did. Like, I, I just like any, fighting Kevin Holland any other way is just a horrible idea. Like, you should just throw him against the cage and take him down and just beat him that way. Like, you have an opening and. I just don't know how, and I know Kevin Holland knows he needs to work on his defensive wrestling and stuff like that, but you can't work on it in two weeks. Like you can't improve that much. And like the one thing I'll give Kevin Holland in this fight is that the activity is huge for him. Like he's doing a favor. Feels like he's he probably feels like he has very little to lose here. Like he just wants to fight. Like it's not about titles. It's not about going up in the rankings. It's about fighting as much as possible. So this is good for Kevin Holland. So this is probably like, the best mindset he could have heading in, into a fight with a guy like Marvin Vittori. I just don't see after fighting five rounds, two weeks ago, coming back, fighting a guy who has somewhat similar attributes to Derek Brunson. Like Derek Brunson just basically wrote the blueprint on how to beat him. I just don't see a world where he doesn't do very similar work. So Vittori wins a decision in my eyes. Uh, I think Kevin Holland will have his moments. He had his moments against, against Brunson in the second round, but at the end of the day, I just I think Vittori gets it done. Do you he think moves on to other things? Do you think Vittori will fight like Brunson in the sense that he just needs to get that W? Or do you think Vittori goes, Oh, I have to win I gotta finish this guy. I gotta win big and impressive. Because I I, I feel I Brunson Br- won so dominantly because he was like, I just need a W. And I don't think Vittori's that same guy, that same type of fighter, and I think that's gonna be a ne- I think that's gonna work against him. In this fight, I think he's good. I think he'll take more chances than Derek mm-hmm. Brunson did, but I have a feeling he's going to want to take this fight to the ground as often and yeah. as much as possible. 
know what I mean? As many times as he can get this fight to the ground and get takedowns and work on against the cage and try to wear him down. Like, I think we're going to see that, but I think he'll be a little more offensive, especially in like Holland's guard or, you know, trying to improve position. I don't think he's going to be okay with just like sitting in the guard and trying to land the occasional strike and, you know, just doing enough to make sure the referee doesn't stand him up. I think he's going to try to more, to be more active down there, try to look for finishes. Like he's going to look for finishes, but I just feel like he's going to, He's not going to stand around and have a kickboxing match with Kevin Holland as much as he can. Like he's going to try to avoid that as much as possible. Like you take the the path to least resistance, but he's going to be more aggressive than Derek Brunson. But I feel like we're going to see something more similar. But Vittoria will have more more violent intention. Arnold Vittoria only has two knockouts in his career, so I don't know why a lot of people I've seen on Twitter saying Marvin by K- TKO. And yeah, it's very hard to stop Kevin Holland with strikes anyway. Like Marvin no one's ever done nine it. submission. Marvin Torrey has nine submission wins, and like two or three of them are in the UFC, including his debut. So if Marvin Torrey is gonna stop Kevin Holland, it's gonna be by a submission, I think. So I don't think it's gonna be a TKO by any means. I like even Jack Hermanson, like Marvin Torrey shattered Jack Hermanson's jaw and couldn't finish him with strikes. So I just think Marvin, if he wins is by stoppage, it'll probably be by submission. Yeah, man. Yeah. Why? Why I did Only, pick Holland? I do think Vittori's path to victory is the ground game for sure. To using yeah. just using that size. Only fourteen percent of the eighty-one percent who picked uh, Vittori are saying knockout, and the nineteen percent uh, who are picking Holland, I guess, including me, are all thinking he looks like he needs like he needs a kind of to get lucky. He needs to he needs to catch him because it's seventy-four percent of the people picking Holland are going KO TKO. So I guess that's that's yes, yeah, the mindset is Holland needs to catch him. It'll it'll be. Some luck will be involved, as you know, to, with respect to both guys. Some luck will be involved if uh, if Holland. Yeah, I would I would assume Kevin Holland's like striking accuracy and speed would maybe just like oh shit, like Marvin just gets clipped once and like takes a step mm-hmm. back, and Kevin just again Kevin just needs to blitz forward, which he didn't do against Brunson if he clips him. Yeah, and if there's one Take chances in Kevin. Kevin Holland is a guy who can create fight changing moments and Mm -hmm. it's not just creating the moment. It's capitalizing on the moment too. If he can Mm -hmm. do that, he's, he's, he's okay. He has a chance, but it's just, we saw it. We saw it in the Brunson fight. He had a chance to get that fight changing moment. He almost got it. And then, you know, Brunson took him down Mm -hmm. and that was it. So we'll see. It's an interesting fight. There's heat here. I kind of wish like, there's a little more build for a fight like this since it's been brewing for so long, especially from Holland's end, but we get it. I think we're going to get kind of the, the best case scenario, kind of Kevin Holland heading into a fight on short notice and just trying to go in there and play spoiler, but we'll see what happens. It's a fun fight, but this co-man event, whoo, this is a fight. I think because Bellator's got a card tonight too. Their featherweight fight, I think is the best fight on the card between Adam, Adam Borch and Jeremy Kennedy the best fight of the weekend, in my opinion, is Arnold Allen versus Sadiq Youssef. I am so excited for this fight. Right now, Sadiq Youssef, the minus 150 favorite against Arnold Allen. The comeback on him is at plus 130. Jose, you love this fight. For those who missed between the links, wax poetically on this cold main event because it just kicks ass, man. This fight checks all my boxes. I love, like, featherweight division has been, like, historically one of my favorite, if not my favorite weight classes of all time uh i love i don't consider these like a lot of people say like oh this is a prospect prospect fight i don't really consider this a prospect fight at all they're both ranked fighters they're both undefeated in the ufc they both have what four or five wins in a row over impressive wins and i think this is the perfect time for these two to fight arnold allen seems to be one of those guys that the ufc could build around in the uk especially if, if darren till is always on the shelf they don't really have uh like jack hermanson has fallen a lot of people in europe uh, there's no real big star. And I think Arnold Allen is sneakily could be one of those fighters. Uh, Leon Edwards, of course, is one of those two. I think the pandemic obviously hurt him, plus his opponents uh, always falling out. It's not his fault. He can't he can't catch a break. I watched your interview with Arnold Allen, and he really sold me on why this fight is awesome because A, Sadiq Youssef is from another part of the world, Nigeria, that the UFC is really trying to push forward. So if he beats Arnold Allen and is another undefeated Nigerian like, like fighter they can really push, there's no excuse for them not to go to at least Africa in some way in 2000, maybe 22, when the world kind of calms down. But Arnold Allen like, laid it out perfectly. Like All the fighters he got has gotten in the UFC are going to try and shoot on him, and he really has to be defensive-minded, like defensive striking, defensive wrestling, defensive grappling, and he's done well as he's undefeated. And someone from the UK 
using defensive rap grappling as well as him is obviously impressive because as we all know, like people from the UK, I'm sorry, England, you're not the best wrestlers or grapplers in the world. Uh, but Arnold Allen is kind of uh, proving that argument wrong. So he's very excited to fight someone that he doesn't have to worry about shooting on him. So I think we're going to see a style of Ar- that Ar- with Arnold Allen that we haven't seen. And we're going to see, get to see more of his tools so I have no idea who to pick in this fight because I like both <laughs> fighters. They're both great interviews. They're both great people. And I wish this was five rounds, but I do think this is the perfect co-main event for this card on ABC. Checks all my boxes. High-level martial arts competition against two gentlemen that can just beat your ass at any time. This is a Jose fight all around. Absolutely. AK, your thoughts on this fight? Because we got Sadiq Youssef, who's looked great. He's part of the greatest contender series fight ever mm-hmm. with Mike Davis. That fight was ridiculous. Oh. If you've never seen that, I highly recommend you go watch Sadiq Youssef versus Mike Davis. It's insane. And then we have Arnold Allen, who quietly, nine wins in a row. He's 7-0 and in the UFC. He is the second longest winning streak in the featherweight division behind the champion, Alexander Volkanovsky. So... This is a, this is definitely not a prospect fight. This is two guys. This is a next. Who's going to take that next step in a loaded division kind of fight? Your thoughts on Arnold Allen versus Sadiq Yusuf, man? You threw me off with that uh, second longest because I think Volkanovski's what one eight, but one of them was a catchweight bout, something like that, right? You can count it. He's eight because he, he's what eight and no. Well, normally I would, but he's what eight and no. So he's, like, he's, 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 he's he's undefeated in the UFC, right? He has nine. He he's has nine wins in the UFC. He's nine. Oh, okay, okay. So he is behind uh, Volkanovski with eight. Okay. Um, but uh, what was the question? Oh, yes. Oh, first, I want to say uh, Yusuf fits. Fit, he, Yusuf fits fits the prospect mold a little bit more. Like I understand why people. Yeah. Arnold Allen definitely not. I don't. I don't think anyone. I don't understand anyone calling uh, Arnold Allen the prospect at this point. Uh, I, I get it. He's still relatively young, but he's about. This will be nine years now. Nine years as a pro. Uh, seven and zero in the UFC. Uh, you're not a prospect anymore. Yusuf a little more so. This will be. Five years, I think next next week will be five years uh, since his pro debut. So sure, uh, but both guys, I mean, de- uh, Yusuf definitely feels seasoned beyond his years. Like he looks like someone who's been fighting for at least seven or eight years. Um, so it's a great. Ma- I-, I love this kind of matchmaking. You know, you know, Mike. We always talk about our matchmaking show. I'm not one of those people who shies uh, shies away from putting um, guys who are unbeaten in the UFC against each other. I love that. Uh, it, it makes a lot a little more sense with these two because they are further along. This isn't like a two and O guy or a three and O guy going against another two and O three and O guy. But even then, we've seen them shy away. You know, we've we've seen them kind of be like ah, you know, you the, the idea that you you lose a contender, you lose a future contender by fate putting them against uh, one another. And I don't think that's the case at all. I think whoever loses here, some fair play, they'll probably bounce back. They're, they 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 lost on this day, you know, on Saturday, but. I don't think they'll fall too far back in the rankings. I think each guy still has a super bright future ahead of them. Um, I'm I'm leaning towards uh, uh, Arnold Allen. I know I know Jose said it's it's tough to pick. Absolutely, it's a coin toss. I I don't feel strongly about this. I'm leaning towards Arnold Allen. I liked I liked what I saw in the win over Nick Lentz. Um, Gilbert Melendez. I know a little past his prime, but you know dominated that matchup as he should have. So yeah, I lean towards Allen. But boy, this is one of those anything could happen fights. Clear clear fight of the night front runner. Uh, and a great, great choice for the co-main event, uh, especially one on ABC. I this is a really good opportunity for these guys to shine. This is a, a star-making moment, possibly. It's funny because like everybody talks about the long layout that Arnold Allen has had, but Sadiq Yusuf has been out longer, not by much longer, but he's been out a week longer than Arnold has. A week, yeah. Both guys <laughs> yeah. have been fought since January of 2020, but. I feel like Arnold Allen's approach at this point is 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 a little different than it was when he first got into the UFC, Casey, because this is a guy who was just, you know, I'm in the UFC. I got to take what they could give me. Heading into that January fight with Nick Lentz, who's supposed to fight Josh Emmett, which was a top 10 wow. guy. Emmett I, got hurt. I forgot about that. Lentz yeah. comes in on short notice. Allen gets the win. Then he's supposed to fight Jeremy Stevens in November. Stevens gets injured. I know there were different fights offered to him. I know Giga Chikadze was one of those individuals that was offered to him. He said, you know what? Cool fight, bro, but I'm a top 10 guy. I, I need a ranked guy. I'm, I'm sick of fighting these like unranked guys, dangerous fights. I want a ranked guy. So he waited, stayed patient, and now he gets a fight with Sadiq Yusuf. So this is just an awesome fight, man. Like Your thoughts on this co-main event and you know, two guys with long layoffs? This, it's pretty much even Steven here. I like this fight. Um, I'm not. I'm not. In, I'm not in love with 
um, these two featherweights as much as everyone else is. Um, I like. I, I think. Ar- actually, I like Arnold Allen to win this fight. I think he's just a, a better fighter overall. But no, they've been out for a long time. Maybe City Kusev. Maybe they've just gotten a lot better. I don't know. We'll find out. But um, yeah, it's just, it's a good fight. Um, I actually I don't. Okay, I'm. I know. I'm, I'm going to this. I'm going against uh, against the uh, uh, you guys. But like, I I don't. I don't. I just. I don't. I like. Um. I like Dern and um, Nunez. Yeah, Dern, not Dern. Yeah, Dern and Nunez better. I think that should be actually the co-main event. But this is a fine. This is it's gonna be a high action fight. There probably this probably will be fight of the night. And um, but I yeah, but like the only problem with this fight is I think this is the second best featherweight fight of the weekend. And you mentioned it earlier. I actually, I actually like the Bellator fight between Kennedy and Adam Borch as a, a higher level fight. But um, this is a fine fight, and um, it's a great fight night card. A fine fight, he says. It, it is. I mean, I'm not, I'm not in love. I like Arnold Allen, but I'm, I like I like the I like the Bellator fight better. I think I think I like as far as far as two. If they if they off are if they off round robin, you know, I think Adam Borch would be the best one of all four. But um, no. Interesting. That is an interesting take right there. Well, listen, both of those fights are the two best fights of the weekend, in my opinion. So yeah, I'm I mean, excited I mean, for it, them. It, it, I'm not like I'm not like trying to down it. I just think there's, there's, oh, a, yeah, there's a better fight. I mean, it is a great fight. I, just, I think you great. are. I think you are trying to down it. Oh Casey. yeah. <laughs> I, said, I think. Are you part of the Bellator rankings panel? Yeah. Are you part of the Bellator rankings panel, Casey? <laughs> Uh, don't get me started on that, but I'm going Arnold Allen too in this mm-hmm. fight. I, I mean, I, I think Yusuf. If if this fight's gonna go get finished, I think Yusuf's the guy to get the finish, and that's not out of the realm of possibility. I just think Allen is the more technical guy. Um, he's been in. He he does he's fine down the stretch. Like he he can go a full fifteen, doesn't struggle with it. We kind of saw Sadiq Yusuf kind of fade away in the Andre Feely fight. He still got the win, but Feely started to turn it on. I think Aaron Allen took a lot away from that fight, so I think down the stretch, especially if it's like 1-1 heading into th- into the third, I think Aaron Allen's kind of been in those situations a little bit more um, and can come through in, in a better way. So I think Allen wins a decision. I think it's a great fight, and uh, I'm very much looking forward to it. The betting line's very close, like we said. Uh, then we got Mackenzie Dern versus Nina Nunez. Nina Nunez. Uh, is a minus 140 favorite before that or after that, right before the co-main event, Julian Marquez, minus 185 favorite against Sam Alvey, comes back at plus 160. And then Daniel Rodriguez, the minus 140 favorite against Platinum Perry, Papa Perry, uh, come back on him as a plus 120. Of course, the undercard is interesting. We lost a fight. Aaron Blanchfield versus Norma Dumont is not happening. Dumont missed weight by three and a half pounds. The commission said, uh-uh. And that fight's no longer happening. So, AK, you had uh, some have, thoughts have, on that. I do have some thoughts and an update from, of course, our man, our, our, our the Brazilian piece, Guillermo Cruz, of course, has already uh, spoken to Norma, uh, Norma Dumont. Uh, and she says, uh, as you just mentioned, the commission did not allow her to fight. Uh, and apparently, this is from Dumont, apparently the UFC will send me to the PI to run some tests and find out the best way for me to cut weight. They will do some studies with me and see how I'll continue with this weight class because I believe they really will close the featherweight division. I'm pretty upset I wanted to fight. So uh, it doesn't sound like, at least as far as she knows, that uh, featherweight is an option. Uh, again, we don't know if that's the case. We, as far it, it could continue, but obviously there's always talk of that that division, that quote unquote division, if there even is one, uh, being shut down. So I guess she hasn't given up and trying to make 135. But uh, yes, yeah, so this is her second straight fight weighing in at 139.5 pounds. She was also uh, 3.5 over. Uh, for her bout with uh, Ashley Evan Smith, and uh, you know, I, I I don't I don't think I don't think she can make bantamweight comfortably. But the people at the PI can work wonders. Uh, maybe there is actually a good explanation why she hasn't been able to make uh, one thirty six, and uh, and so maybe this isn't the end of seeing her. But it's a shame that we didn't get to see the UFC debut of Aaron Blanchfield, who is a, a top prospect at flyweight. Could could have been the Invicta flyweight champion entering this bout. Uh, mm-hmm. Were it not for a fight with uh, Pro Gonzalez falling through for a vacant title, and uh, yeah, Mike, you mentioned I have some thoughts. I I think that she may have dodged a bullet here. I don't think Dumont is a bad fighter at all, and she would have been much much bigger than a Blanchfield. I think it would have been a very tough debut for Blanchfield. So hopefully, obviously, she's now on the UFC uh, roster, I assume, and gets a proper flyweight debut uh, whenever she's she's ready to, to to fight again. Yeah, but Vegas had Dumont minus two fifty favorite, so they kind of saw the same thing. Uh, that you did. And then before the main card, Jim Miller versus Joe Selecki is a great fight. Scott Holtzman versus Matush Gamrod is a ridiculous fight. I like that fight. Uh, yeah. Jack, 
Jack Shore versus Hunter Azure is a great fight. Uh, Dion Jung versus William Knight's fun. The, there's a lot of like, there's a little bit of, there's, a, there's something for everybody on this card. There's crazy fights, there's heavyweights, there's middleweighty middleweight fights. There's a little bit of everything. And I think uh, every combat sports fan can can take can take solace in that. So do we have uh do we have thoughts and questions from the peeps? Oh yeah. They have they have, oh, have we been questions. Have we been, have we been live this whole time? Oh my god. Oh <laughs> this is embarrassing. <laughs> this is embarrassing. All right, here we go. We've been talking for a while, damn. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Say no, AK. Just say it. No, it is oh, not. It's not that? my birthday. What? No, I oh, no, I said, yeah, I appreciate the wishes. No, it is not my birthday. What? Oh, it is never, okay. It's gonna be. It, it is. Ne oh, it is never my birthday. I just. I did not have. I just had I one of those like edible, you know, bouquet things of like like. I mean, it's welcome. Honeydew and stuff. So yeah. it's, it's gonna be arriving anytime. So it's gonna be awkward. Well, I, so it's just. Well, I won't be. Set, no, it's not awkward at all. I won't be sending it back. I'll tell you that much. Okay. <laughs> I'll be enjoying it. Uh, here we go. Go ahead, AK. Say it. Start it off. Oh, Matt Magic, shout out to Duval. Go ahead, Mike. <laughs> All right. So if Marvin Vittori wins and Kelvin Gaslam beats Bobby Knuckles, does Vittori get the title shot, or does the UFC do UFC things and just give the title <laughs> shot to Darren Till? <laughs> Which, that's not, it's not a ridiculous question either, that's... by the way. So, uh, so let's let's launch it this way, AK. If Vittori wins, is the best case scenario for him? Is he uh, is he the biggest Kelvin Gastelum fan on the planet after that? If Vittori wins, is he the? Uh, I'm sorry, I blacked out for a second. Um, yeah, yeah. Look, um, he he. Uh, as we kind of we kind of we touched upon this a bit earlier in the show, a lot is gonna kind of have to fall into place for Vittori to get that next title shot. He he's he. I know he's like we said. He's made the case. He he fought easy to a split decision and all that. Um, and I, there, there is a segment of fans, by the way, that say Vittori won that fight. No, uh, that same, that's it, that Ooh. same segment where, where every, just Marvin, Marvin, that same, the segment of Marvin Vittori's yeah, family, what <laughs> that same segment that, that anytime, anytime there's a split decision, like within a year, though, people will look back on the split decision and be like, I kind of remember that fight. Yeah, it was split. Maybe, maybe the other guy did win. It's like, no, if you watch that fight, it's a pretty clear win for, yeah. for uh, uh for uh, Israel Adesanya, and like again, and not that Vittori didn't give him a good fight. It was it was Adesanya's toughest test up until that point, but Adesanya won. Um, but yeah, no, I I, I do think that uh, that an impressive win here, as we've said, if he can if he can uh, not just ground out a win, but maybe score a submission and have himself a nice promo. We've seen how far a good promo can go. Michael Chandler, right? He's fighting for the lightweight title now. So if he can channel that that Italian fire that uh jose keeps touching upon into a, a good promo into a this is again this is on abc we we don't know what, what the effect abc will have on on guys careers so far but it's a big deal so it's, it's it's pretty cool to say if you if you won by submission uh on a, a headline an abc card it has to mean something it has to give you some sort of mainstream cachet uh and if that's the case uh you know, look he puts himself right in that short list for a tele shot maybe right now at the front uh, no matter what happens but uh with, with the other fights that have to shake out but at, at least in the talks, and again, if <laughs> we know how negotiations go, he's probably a guy who's willing to take the fight for a reasonable price, uh, according to what the UFC, how the UFC views that. So, uh, I don't know. I, I, I think his odds of getting a title shot this year, I, I'll say, you know what, better than fifty percent. All right, your 60, thoughts on this question, better, Jose? Better than sixty percent. Better than sixty percent. I'll go that far. Wait, sixty percent that Vittori will he get will, this year. This year. Better than sixty percent. Uh, well, to answer your question, Mike, is Marvin Torre the biggest <laughs> Calvin Gastelum fan in the world? A yes, because they're training partners, so it's not like he's going to root against him. <laughs> so one hundred percent. You know, what I mean. Marvin oh. Torre wants Calvin. <laughs> Fair point. Gastelum. This is a selfish <laughs> game at the end of the day, Jose. It's a selfish <laughs> game at the end of the day. The title, it is, but according to an interview on MMAfighting.com with Calvin Gastelum and Marvin Torre, they're only fighting if it's for a title. So that fight could happen if one of them gets the UFC championship. So uh, if Kelvin Gastelum wins, I think that just means Marvin Torrey is maybe a step ahead of Kelvin in this race. It was kind of like at that one point when um, Jeff Neal and Morono were fighting. Uh, they were both like on these runs at welterweight. And we interviewed Alex Morono uh, in Houston, and he was like, Jeff Neal is one step ahead of me, and we're only going to fight if Jeff gets that title first and I catch him. I just think right now Marvin – Considering he's on a win streak, 
is one step ahead of Kelvin. So if Kelvin wins, that is clearly going to benefit Marvin Vittori because, like, we all – I think we all agree Robert Whitaker probably already deserves a rematch with Israel Adesanya to begin with after back-to-back wins over Till uh, and Jared Cannonier, and people just even forget about Jared Cannonier's existence uh, in this whole middleweight landscape. So, yes, Marvin Vittori wants Kelvin to win, A, because they're friends and teammates, and B, because that would knock off a – contender for him to go through and would probably just elevate him higher up in this race to rematch Israel or something. All right, Casey, l- l- let me ask you this. Say Vittori wins, does everything AK said he needs to do, and Kelvin Gastelum wins. Can Darren Till still get that title shot without even fighting? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> will he? Do you think he I, will I, I, if I, it comes down to that? I think uh, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I hate, I hate resorting back to those like, well, whoever takes less money gets the title shot. But, um, uh, I mean, yeah, I think, I think Till is still the front runner for the next title shot against Izzy. But I also think, um, I mean, I also think if Kelvin puts a puts a, a good beating on Whitaker and, and defeats him, um, I don't expect that to happen. But if he does, I actually, I mean, I, why, why, why are we discounting Kelvin being behind behind the line? Um, with Vittori I mean uh, why, why wouldn't the UFC want to run back the greatest middleweight championship fight ever uh, I would and I know it's we're trying to find logic in the UFC's I, well, yeah I know sorry I apologize um, for that but I would say I would assume it's because Kelvin lost a boring fight to Darren and he got submitted by Jack and uh, Vittori just shattered Jack Hermanson's jaw uh, in five rounds on a short notice fight. So if that's the argument they're going to take, I, again, I also don't think Kelvin, after watching Damon's interview with Kelvin, I don't think Kelvin would be one of those guys that would want to like screw over Marvin. Cause like he was very complimentary of Marvin. He's like, I don't want it to be an Usman burn situation, uh, but they've discussed it. But I, from that interview, I pulled that. I don't, if they offered it to Marvin, I don't think Kelvin would want to kind of, backstab his main training partner and take that fight but i don't know that's just what i pulled from it so clearly what's going to happen is holland's going to win mm-hmm. get kelvin's going to win and then we're going to have mm-hmm. izzy versus K- holland that's that's obviously the fight that's going to happen 100 <laughs> <laughs> percent. oh man all right what else we got so Dar- darren till's still the front runner yeah Dar- but yeah saying his name. We'll keep saying his i think name. we can agree on that one yeah for sure Oh, sorry, that was a mistake. <laughs> All right. Best, best producer in the biz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, where does the winner of Alan Yusuf go in the featherweight division with the division stuck for about mm. a year due to Volk Ortega coaching mm. tough? I mean, I'm not going to answer this question because this is a Sunday question. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. I'll, I'll at least take a look at it. Uh, hold on, I'm bringing up my mystery rankings right now. Uh, yeah, I won't. I won't necessarily say who they'll fight. Um, I don't even know if we could because ne- I mean, who like neither guy is top ten yet, right? Uh, what well, Alan is, I believe uh, he's ten. Uh, yeah, but yeah. Sadiq's eleven. Okay, so, like the right, thing. right. It's ten. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, um, so I mean, look, Danny Gain and Zombie are books. So that's not happening. I don't I think the think... answers. I think the answer is Cater. Yeah, because Calvin. Well, did he say he come, he's taking his time? He's I'm coming back though, right? I mean, sure. And we won't see but Cal- after. Who's Jeremy Stevens fighting? Does he have a fight? He's going back he to the fight, right? Car close. Light, lightweight. Yeah, yeah, light. lightweight. You want right, you want. right, right, right. So he's out, and then Ige's what seven or eight, and then so he's already booked, and then Emmett's out to like Dumb, 2022. Yeah. Cal- Calvin would be the next man up for one of those these winners, <sighs> and I think that's a great fight. I think that's well awesome the other. Fight. The other option is, and we probably will end up talking about this on Sunday, Mike. Again, depends what happens tomorrow. Probably one of them gets the gets the Zabit fight if Zabit comes back. But we actually have no idea what's up with Zabit or when he's coming back. So it's that's pure, 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 pure speculation. Um, yeah, yeah, year is, is going to fight eventually, right? He's he's still yeah, there somewhere. He's still out there. You can yep. tell if yep. he lets Usada know where mm-hmm. he is. I have a feeling whoever wins. I'll say this: What's next is probably a bit of a wait. Think think. Uh, which sucks because again, I like we said, both guys are coming off a layoff of almost like 450 days, so they probably want to get in there as soon as possible. So it's either they have to wait for someone in the top 10, and when I say wait, I mean like five, six months. I know that sucks to hear, but uh, or the option is to fight someone below them, which uh, 
I think Arlen Allen definitely shouldn't do if he wins because he'll be 8-0 uh, and he'll see 10 straight victories. Uh, and Yusuf maybe could consider it, but even he would be 5-0 in the UFC, 7 straight victories. So they're just kind of stuck. But I, I would see, I would say uh, you'll see, you, you won't see them for a while. They'll have to wait. Who's Burgos fighting? Barbosa? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Winner of that would be maybe fun. the winner that of that too. But that's a little that's a little because sure. they're both outside the top ten. I don't so a win wouldn't mm-hmm. put him in the top ten. Um, that would be a fun fight too. Or the loser maybe of Ige and Zombie. Do you think there's any chance yeah, the UFC really gets behind the winner of this fight? And I think there's there's promotional reason to get to get seriously behind either guy. Um, that they could shoot him the throw him in the deep end, book him against someone like Max Holloway. That's up to Max. I would. I wouldn't hate either of those fights. I just think it would be up to Max at that point. Or it's forty five. You can't. You can't really mess up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So beats three. So like either of those. Like if they did Max and Zabit fight, because they're both top fives that don't have a fight, and Yair is still on the shelf, and Zombies booked. So I think Holloway Zabit is a fun fight, and I think Cater versus the winner of Allen and Yusef is a fun fight. Yeah. There, so there, like there's no nice protecting little. Featherweight tournament we got going on. Those, <laughs> if only they actually had those in the UFC. But yeah, there's there's no protecting your record when you the top twenty of the featherweight division in the UFC. There's no protecting your yeah. record. It's it's yeah. you're 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 giving something up or just to, just stay busy or you're gonna have to wait yeah. for for a big fight. But either way, you're fighting someone tough and uh, <laughs> there's no there's no padding. Yeah, you know with Volk Ortega most likely not happening till the third quarter, at minimum I think this year. Like <laughs> I know it's, it sucks even saying that. So. Say it doesn't happen in like November. I think we're gonna get some crazy matchups in featherweight, because there's no, you're, you're, they're just fighting really. Because you know, I, you know what I mean. Like no one, it's, you're kind of fighting just to keep your rank. So I think we, I think we are gonna have some crazy matchups com- coming this year in featherweight division for sure. Maybe but uh, look at maybe featherweights <laughs> going up to 155, like we talked about on. on Might have to. I think. Yeah. Look, can, can you imagine? Can you imagine July 10th? The co-main event of Poirier McGregor three. You do Holloway versus freaking Gagey five oh rounds. Are you kidding me? That's the <laughs> fight. You, That's the fight to make, again. folks. I can't believe That's it. the yeah. fight. Oh, it's so good. Don't, te- don't tease. So good. Don't tease me, Mister Heck. It's don't so do good. That. Don't do that to me. Guys, look at me. Don't look what is like coming around the bottom of the top twenty in uh, in featherweight. Dewadu, Evloyev, Giga Jakadze. This is crazy. This division is crazy. So Just good. give me, so give, good. give me Giga Jukazi versus Kim Dalu all day. Oh what? My God. Yes. What a division. Oh my God. <laughs> if, if only they could get all these featherweights and put them in some sort of tournament, like a, a, a some sort of pre, but a grand one. But I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But who would do that? <laughs> what, ma- what, what, what major? <laughs> what major promotion would do that? Though you know. That's Casey, tell us. You're the your PR Bellator. What do you mean? Promotion. <laughs> no, just giving you shit. Clearly. <laughs> Adam Boyd. Right, what else we got? Dude, Jamie, Jamie Kennedy is super good. He he only had one loss in the UFC. He lost to freaking yeah. Volkanovski. You know, he just... Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. It's a right, good fight. Travesty. It's an excellent travesty. fight. Bader, yeah, ba- that Bader Machuda fight is tonight, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, dude, Carmouche and Porto are fighting. It's like it's a Casangano's fighting. It's a, it's a good card. I'm excited about Locked it. Tonight. Shout out to Duval. People, Duval is not a question, all right? Duval is a state of mind. So I appreciate the Duval. Chat. In a few weeks. So let's wait for, let's wait for all these crafts. Duval. Oh, then it's really good. Yeah, yeah. People, can we put a moratorium on Duval's until Jose is actually in Duval County, please? More time. I'm not, I'm not shutting out anymore. Duval is a state yeah, of mind. We are always there. No, We're always, this is true. It's there, but. All right, like, yeah. Someone's actually gonna have to be there soon. So. Ha! How this many tattoos question. do you reckon Perry and Rodriguez have combined? One giant one. <laughs> just, just, this is a, ta- this is a scrap between yeah. a dude with a throat tattoo and a dude with a face tattoo. Like, I'm into it, man. This is like, you know, when your mo- like your grandma's like, "Oh, MMA is for those scary people." Like, yeah, this is the fight that she thinks all <laughs> yep. UFC fights are. <laughs> <laughs> and well, I think this is a perfect fight to kick off UFC at ABC. <laughs> Mike Perry's opening it. Kevin Holland's closing it. That's great. Love it. No, love I, I, I like that. I, I love the idea of that. No, no, like UFC is like we're gonna have 
this this Venom Reebok fight kit, so everything doesn't look like it's all no NASCAR. It looks more professional. Yet we have Mike Perry. <laughs> like it's like okay, sure they're wearing. You look the good on the scale today. You look good. Second one up there, I think. Second or third one. He hit one seventy on the nose. So good for him. Speak, speaking speaking of him. this is now a tattoo podcast. Okay, uh, whose tattoos enough. do you like more in the main event? Kevin's or Marvin's? It's two completely different styles. Oh, um, Marvin. I'm sorry, sorry, Kevin's. Kevin's for yeah. sure. I, 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 I if you I, like I, if you like cohesive sleeves or do you like the <laughs> sticker sticker tats? That's pretty much what you gotta pick. Yeah. I like I like tattoos. Do you can tell what neighborhood you're from? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> I was like, I know where you live. I can tell by your, your chest tattoos. So the answer is several. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Terrence Leverett, if Dern gets past Nunez, is she one fight away from a title fight? Absolutely. No. I, think, I think absolutely. I, not out of the realm of possibility. No way, yeah. I, I think I think this is such good matchmaking by the UFC. Um, Perfect. Yeah. Because, yes. because agree, especially yeah. with Miss um, um, uh, Nunez, um, her, uh, I got to get used to saying that now. Um, Nunez is uh, high ranking, and with her long layoff, we honestly don't know how how she's gonna look tonight. She, she you no, know, even though she's ranked number five, she may not be really a five number five ranked fighter anymore, just due to you know just having a baby. Or she could be better. Who knows? But I think this is a great chance for Dern to kind of take advantage of that. And the UFC has been has been has been on the the Mackenzie Dern train for a while. So yeah, if she if she beats um um. Uh, Nunez convincingly, heck yeah, and I'll be super impressed honestly because I'm not expecting her to, but if she does, wow, oh, she 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 has defied my is. expectations. I think the only thing that would keep like she the, she she might be too just the way the the lay of the land because um the person that beat Mackenzie Amanda Hebos just got TKO'd by Marina, so I think they might be one behind Marina. Uh, and then Yan Janan sitting at three hasn't lost in the UFC. And of course, Joanna is waiting there too. Mm -hmm. So they might just be two away just based on who wins certain fights. But I favor Mackenzie in this fight. And I wouldn't, I want to see her face Whaley or Rose. Mm -hmm. uh, it just depends on how all these other fights play out first. Because who's Jan fighting? Carla, right? Yep. Is that official? Okay. And then, and I, that would be how many wins in a row for Carla? She almost got a title fight anyway because of the Rose in the <laughs> UFC. Situation. Five, five in a row. Yeah. So it'd be like five in a row facing Jan Janan, who's what also like what four in a row, something like that. Uh, in the UFC, uh, Jan yeah. Janan's six and zero. Right. So she's six there. Nine, That's I think they're a step ahead, and then Marina I think is just a step ahead based solely on the fact that she just TKO'd Amanda, <laughs> uh, the person that beat McKenzie. So, uh, but wouldn't hate either one fighting for McKenzie fighting for a title anytime soon. I'm not saying I'm not saying McKenzie deserves it, but we're talking UFC logic here, you know. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I gave I gave a hard no when I first looked at the question. Now I'm just thinking about right where would where would uh, Nina theoretically be? She is five. You're right. It, she is actually five in the official rankings right now uh, in the strawberry contenders rankings. Yeah, she she you know she she handled uh, uh, Claudia Gadelia, who's been top seven, top eight for the longest time. So she she took her spot right. Mm -hmm. But then she has been away for a long time. So in my personal rankings, I, I just removed her. But I mean, she wouldn't. She doesn't just fall to the bottom of the rankings because uh, of inactivity. Well. We that is true. We also have Tatiana teasing a return this summer. Yeah. So if Mackenzie wins, wouldn't hate that fight because wow. uh, that's Tatiana probably the fight to still, make. Wow. Yeah, because Tatiana beat Nina back in Chicago, and neither of them have fought since. So if Mackenzie then beats Nina and takes her spot, I think what in my rankings Tatiana would be like four, which would mean uh, Dern would be five. I think that's an awesome fight for the summer. So she leapfrogs yeah. Hebus. Hebus, who, how long was it, the Hebus fight? Eh, it was like two years ago now. I, uh, well, no, not even. It's like 18 months ago. It's not yeah. even that long ago. So it's like, it's hard for me to put her over Hebus, right? I do, I still, I yeah, do feel like Hebus is better Amanda's than Amanda's just fought at Flyweight once and then she got TKO'd. So, uh, yeah. But right. man, I mean, Amanda right. might be the most talented, right. but in just terms of how the lay of the land is. Because, like, yeah. if, Amanda and, if Amanda and Marina fought 10 times, I think that's 50 50. I just think Marina clipped her that night and beat her. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know. Uh, rules. Star, yeah, Star Wars rules. rules. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah Star Wars rules. I'm, I'm, yeah. Just, I'm just thinking about the original question. Is she one away? That that's the thing. Is we have, I, obviously she's in she's in the mix. One away. So she beats like, Nina and then fights Lemos either. Like sitting there, Tatiana. you got Angela's gonna fight Amanda, Amanda. B Boss. So like, there are so many fights that could like shake this up. Because Angela will fight every month, mm -hmm. every week. So she's gonna be ready no matter what. So for all we know. Uh, Angela could be the Kevin Holland of this division, win five in a row, and all of a sudden we're talking about her fighting for the title next. Yeah. I think I'm, she's at least two away. I'm going two. I'm going two. She's she's <laughs> yeah. two she's two good wins Darren? away. I agree. Darren. I'm a Kendra Darren. Yeah, I agree. I'm yeah. Two wins. Cool. All right. Uh Charlie, I, I like that, guys. we did we did the math on that one. Yeah. I like that. We did the math. We did the math. This is a you question, AK. Yes. Man, John McDessie. Oh, sorry, I'll read it out. Sorry, uh, John Dangan always with a quick question. Question for me. Thoughts on fellow Canadian John McDessie's return to the Octagon tomorrow? I was very fortunate to watch John before uh, he came to the UFC. His talent was, I mean, evident from the beginning. He was. I remember the show I saw Matt. He was so clearly, uh, clearly a step above the guy he was facing, and you knew that he was he was bound for for bigger things. I, I don't remember. I don't think it was his last fight. No, it was two fights. Two fights before he uh, he eventually made it to the UFC, and uh, it's. I don't know. The guy has been so inconsistent. I hate that his opponent missed weight because uh, McDessie is not a particularly large uh, uh, lightweight, even though uh, he, he himself has had weight issues in the past. It's more of like a sort of mass. He's not a very big guy. Uh, and I don't like that his opponent, um, who's fought I think, the last couple of fights at welterweight, uh, didn't make the weight. So that's an issue. I'll, I... <sighs> I don't even know if I can favor him in this fight because I think Bahamanas is a pretty talented guy and that wait, that weight miss bugs me. So uh, I think it's great to see him back. I know it's been a, over a year. He's only fought once a year since uh, 20, like 18. He fought, <laughs> July, I'm looking at it now, July 2018, March 2019, March 2020, and now April uh, 2021. So it's tough, man. It's tough for a guy like this to find a rhythm. Um, he's getting a little bit up there in age. You know, I'm not saying he's old. He's getting a little up there in age. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see him return. I do wonder, though, if, if he gets a loss here, because he's been away for so long and it has also been fairly inconsistent, if, uh, if he's one of those veterans who ends up on the chopping block. So what a, what a terrible, what a pessimistic thing to say. But I've, I've, John asked <laughs> my thoughts. There's my thoughts. Sorry. You're completely right, though. Mm. This is, listen, they really like Ignacio Bahamantes off the, like that, especially after that performance on the Contender Series. They like him. They like him a lot. They like Bilal Muhammad and Ignacio is like one of Bilal's like main training partners and teammates. This is kind of a, this is kind of a fight that the UFC is, this is no disrespect to John McDessie, but this is one of those kind of lines of thinking fights where yeah. let's hope this young kid just kind of rolls over and yeah. kind of rolls and he moves on to bigger and better things. We can push him and, you know, McDessie's got a veteran name that he can build off of. So well, it's kind of what I'm thinking. With, I think the problem with McDessie is, his two most famous fights, he got his head kicked in, <laughs> both of them, yeah. in the Cowboy and uh, Lando fight. Like, when people think John Medesi, they think of Cowboy breaking his jaw and Medesi waving it off in the middle of the fight. And then they think of Lando hitting that wheel kick, and then everyone thought Lando was going to be the next big thing. So, And then, of, of, to be fair, Medesi's beaten, like, Abel Trujillo and Ross Pearson and uh, uh -huh. uh, Manny Baghdad and all that stuff, but I just think... Yeah, what Mike said. This is a star-making uh, performance for Medesi's opponent. Kyle Watson spinning back fist, which, as I look at it now, was 10 years ago. In Toronto? Yeah, 10 years ago, in Toronto. Oh, yeah, that, that was, I remember that. Yeah, that was, that that was, was, yeah. That was so good. And, 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 the, and the, uh, the Sky, Sky wow. Dome? What's it called? Toronto. Not, yeah, well, now the Rogers Center. Yeah. But no, no, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't recognize these corporate names. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, not, they're not paying me to advertise for the, the Rogers, whatever that is. It's the Sky Dome, dang it's it. Named after Mr. Rogers, Casey. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Yeah, I love that. The Mr. Rogers Dome. That's cool. <laughs> oh, in that sense. <laughs> Apologies. Everyone wearing sweaters. That, <laughs> wearing sweaters. Medesi, it's amazing. That Medesi cowboy fight was supposed to be Cowboy Habib, too. Medesi stepped oh. on short notice. That's that fight home. card was supposed to be uh, Jones Rumble and, uh, Oh yeah, some, some, some Weidman yeah, and some. and Cowboy Habib, and then all sorts of craziness happened. And the only fight that ha that stayed intact was Weidman Belfort, which had been snake bitten for so many years before that. Do you remember which which was the reason for this particular John Jones uh, yeah, removal? Yeah, he hit a woman and ran away, and then Daniel yes, Cormier got pulled from his fight against Ryan Bader, 
to fight Anthony Johnson for the vacant title. Right. Another fight that we that we thought was like definitely going to happen someday. And DC Ryan never, Bader never, that, that had the yeah. greatest. The, the, remember know, that we, showdown, the press conference. God dang yep. it. Yeah. We thought guaranteed to happen. Guaranteed, we thought it's gonna happen someday. The only that, time that Ryan Bader ever had serious heat on a fight. Only time. Yeah, that, uh, true. No. that 187 fight card was nuts too. That was the one. Colby fought on the prelims. I'm pretty sure Islam Makachev like opens the entire card. Uh, Joe B fought freaking John Moraga in a scrap, and then everyone forgot about it because Andre Arlovsky and Travis Brown had the greatest one round fight, not names. Uh, uh, Diaz, Diaz, Diaz. <laughs> Diaz. So that fight card was absolutely bananas. And I'm looking, John Dodson fought and Zach Makovsky. Me out of an elevator Look at that. On that weekend. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he buried the lead. <laughs> he just, his, well, his entourage maybe we can... used the elevator, so I had to leave to make room. I was like, whatever. Your last album so. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we'd be, also, we'd be remiss if we didn't. Uh, Say RIP to DMX. That was uh, oh, of course. Some sad news. Officially passed away today. His family released a statement. Just awful. He's been on my gym playlist for years. <laughs> and uh, listen, Anderson Silva, ain't no sunshine. When that when that music hit, every time he made the walk, it was just magic. It was unbelievable. So. And we'll hit it. We'll hit again soon. We'll hit again. It's gonna hit extra hard when he fights uh, Chavez. Yeah. Hopefully he comes out to that and not like his kids. Not as good song. <laughs> Maybe a mashup. Maybe a mashup. Mash them up. Mash them up. We have an Anthony there Silva's kid. Ooh. It's just not as good as the DMX song. That's all. Oh, okay. I didn't say it sucked. I said it's not as good. DMX is good. Okay. All right. What? Uh, on that note, how dare you? Never. Yeah, we're never was here. a DMX guy. Hey, I'm just. I'm, 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 I'm just I'm, waiting for the. R. R. I'm, R. R. I'm just I'm waiting for the karaoke bars to open up again, so we can all have a couple of drinks <laughs> and, and sing party up. <laughs> What I want to it's going to be Woodstock 99 all he, over. Yeah, he that's, was very, that's very influential, that very popular debut. rapper, I will say. That's Casey, awesome. when you make very, your very amateur debut, I hope you get well, I don't hope. I'm assuming you're going to accidentally get matched up with Anderson Silva's kid when he makes his amateur <laughs> <laughs> What a story that would be. Unreal. All right. Well, listen, more magic hopefully will be made tomorrow. Uf, uh, UFC 3 or UFC on ABC 2, whatever you want to call it. We got Bellator coverage going down. Yeah. It's, it's going to be an exciting weekend of combat sports action. We're getting out of here for Casey, AK, and Jose. I am Mike Heck. We'll see you tomorrow morning, everybody. <laughs> That's right. Happy birthday, AK. <laughs> it's not my birthday. <laughs> well, why'd you, why'd you tell me to mention it then? Weird. <laughs>